Hello and good evening, everyone. Good evening. This is Sui Kiang from Equities Tracker. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> and uh, appreciate if you could share this live sh session with your friends. Uh. So you must be wondering why, uh, where is Benny and Alvin? Shaving hair. <laughs> 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 uh, unfortunately, both of them are off for tonight's uh, session and because they are tied up with another matters. But don't worry, you will be seeing uh, Benny tomorrow again. And uh, for those from Penang uh, joining us, our, joining our master class this Friday to Sunday, you will see, uh, you will meet Elvin in person. Yeah, this Friday to Sunday. So uh, Jason and I, together with C Sifu, uh, Peter Sifu, will be taking up this uh, the road tonight to share with mm -hmm. you on warrants. So our title and sharing tonight is on warrant stocks on turbo. So we are going going to discuss and talk about all <coughs> turbo is uh, faster speed uh, in 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 our equities market. So. So, uh, Peter and Jason, are uh, you ready? You, you, you are the speaker tonight. I, I'm just uh, Karate. Just, I'm just fulfill the three boxes only. This is two <laughs> boxes. It looks very weird. Uh, so, I come in to, to fulfill the three boxes. So, yeah. <laughs> I thought we are fortunate to have uh, Peter to back up both of us. Uh, <laughs> you know, my job, my job is, to, is to monitor the question and ask you the questions. <laughs> oh, so, if we... we we were make, making some mistakes, so you will uh, make some punishment to us. Uh, but not. Hopefully, we're not. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> not. Sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> ah, again. Uh. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, Jason, can we have a slide on board? Yep. Yes, our title tonight, uh, sharing tonight, Warren's uh, stock on turbo. So before we start, uh, allow us allow allow me to uh, state the disclaimer again. So the sharing the sharing tonight is purely for education purpose, not meant for any buy or call sell. So if you have any problem or uh, Kindly seek your broker for further uh, further advice. And also, my English is not as fluent as uh, Benny and Elvin, so bear with us, uh, bear with me, All right? Right, so uh, shall we start? Yep. Okay, so uh, we will split the session tonight into three parts. First, uh, what is warrant, and second, key indicators of uh, evalu evaluating warrants, and third, managing the risk of investing in a warrant. Right, so what is warrant? I guess this is a very good question to those, especially uh, beginners. But let me put it into a, a more simple way. More simple way. So, I assume I assume a, a, a stock is a cake, and uh, this cake is a very special cake, a very delicious and yummy cake, and which costs you ten bucks per cake. And uh, this cake is uh, made by a owner of a, co a cake cake shop, and the owner of the cake shop is very keen, dedicated in operating the cake shop. So after a while, uh, the owner also making some uh, good relationship with uh, his customers. And uh, next, in order to uh, boost the, the sales and the cake business, the owner decided to issue a warrant to his customer. So if you bought a cake, you will receive one voucher. So the terms and conditions of using this uh, voucher is that uh, within the fixed period of time, if you plan to buy a cake, you are welcome to come back to the same shop, same, uh, same uh, cake shop, and utilize your voucher, paying five bucks in cash, then you will receive a new cake. 
So this is the terms and condition uh, for using the, this uh, voucher. And more, the more important terms and condition is that you must bought the cake before. So you consider a regular customer or old customer in order for you to entitle to receive this voucher. Okay, so this is uh, some terms and condition for this. And uh, the, the cake actually, as I mentioned just now, is very delicious, very yummy, and uh, you miss it again. Okay, you miss it very much. And after a while, a few days uh, later, you decided to eat the cake again. So if this round, you can make use, fully utilize your voucher on hand to convert it into a new cake, a cake. Okay, so remember because you are the customer who bought the cake before, so you are entitled for this. So utilize a voucher plus stock up another five ringgit in cash, you will enjoy a new cake. Okay. Take note that your cost, oh, your cost of uh, these cakes is only five dollars. Okay, to enjoy a cake which is selling at $10. So compared to a totally new customer who didn't buy the cake before, so you have uh, uh, some advantage. Uh. So consider this is a good deal, uh, isn't it? All right, so, but not among all, among all the customer, not all of them, uh, among all the customer who receive the voucher, not all of them convert or utilize the voucher immediately. So you have you have the freedom to use it anytime, as long as within the fixed time. So as the time pass by, maybe one year, two years, or three years. So do you think that the cake is still uh, remain the same at 10, 10 bucks per cake? As I mentioned just now, this is a very delicious cake, yummy cake. So I uh, normally, in this case, the cake will appreciate along the time. So it will also appreciate uh, uh, over the time, grow along the economic growth. Uh, remember, we have uh, inflation as well. So, and in addition, appreciate along the different uh, kinds of uh, valuation because um, during these two or three years, the, the cake the, the reputation of this cake or, or shop has been spread around. So this is an additional, another uh, different kinds of uh, valuation we need to factor in. So all of this enable it, this cake to appreciate from $10, 10 bucks to 20 bucks, okay, in this case. But look, it, look back at the voucher. The voucher is still a voucher which is valid, uh, still a valid voucher which is stock up another five bucks to convert and receive a new cake. Okay, so as an eligible customer, you still entitled to stock up five bucks, uh, five, five ringgit cash in cash for a new cake. So, but this point of time, your cake, your, your, your cake that you received this time, come no longer no longer a 10 bucks a cake because right now it it is a 20 dollars cake right now okay so different time it has a different uh, value already so uh talking about the 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 voucher so the five dollar voucher that you received some time ago in this case how much will it be right now so over here we have some uh, one question mark. The voucher right now, how much? How how much will it be right now? Any 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 one of you? Maybe some of you, some of the uh, uh, follower or participant tonight already know the answer, but we let the others to 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 make a guess or answer. If you know the answer, how much is the voucher right now? Okay. Right next. Of course, it, I, I think the hint over here is no longer $5, uh, the voucher, right? Okay, so actually you will, re you will notice that uh, as the time goes by, the cake has been appreciated from $10 to $20, okay? At the same time, the voucher's uh, face value also appreciating, also appreciating. So in this case, appreciated from how much to how much? 
Phi. Oh, oh, okay. Let us ah, or we already show the answer. Uh, I noticed Aaron Chong mentioned that eight dollars. Uh, is even more. Okay, more than ten dollars because right now the voucher it is actually equivalent to fifteen dollars because you top up a five dollars uh, in cash to receive a cake, which costs you twenty dollars. So ideally, the voucher also appreciated from five dollars to fifteen dollars, in this case. So, but the growing rate, growing rate of both cakes and uh, voucher actually are different. So if you calculated uh, for cake, it appreciated uh, or increased hundred percent, whereas for voucher, voucher it increased two hundred percent. So which is higher than the cake? Okay, so if I were to conclude that in this case, uh, we can uh, make a, a, a assumption, a conclusion that the cake actually is uh, refers to the mother's share, and whereas the voucher in this case uh, refer to warrants. Okay, that we are going to discuss in in details uh, later on. So uh, I hope through this uh, simple assumption and explanation, I hope all of you get, uh, especially the beginners, getting some uh, idea and understand what is uh, Warren about. Okay, so uh, I I uh, completed the first part and I shall now pass uh, pass it to uh, my uh, colleague Jason to continue with the second uh, session. Key indicators of evaluating warrants. So uh, over to you, Jason. All right, uh, thank you, Sui Kiang, for, for uh, letting us know about what exactly is a warrant. So from well, what uh, Sui Kiang was mentioning, warrants is basically like a voucher. And in fact, there was a questions of, uh, there are certain questions in Facebook, um, okay. From Christine Call, is it also possible the cake can also be less than 10 ringgit as time goes by? Uh, if I may take the question, Sui Kiang was mentioning like, you know, the cake is, is like the mother share. So definitely there are also chances that it will be less than 10 ringgit or more than 10 ringgit. Inflation might kick in, deflation also might kick in. What if it's no longer the, the yummy cake that you used to eat, right? So these are all the kinds of valuation and uh, in, that, that would subscribe sorry that would help makes it valued at 10 ringgit okay so over here we want uh, on the second portion of this session we would like to understand what is the key indicators of evaluating warrants okay so allow me to use an example over here when the first time we we introduce or we understand we want to know about a warrant there are six segments that we want to first understand so it's like the first portion, the conversion and exercise price, the ratio as well. So exactly like what uh, Sui Kiang was mentioning at, at the starting of the cake vouchers, he was checking if how much he need to invest in, which is five ringgit, he need to give five ringgit in cash to the cake sellers so that he can get a free cake for free. So by giving out this voucher and converting it to cakes, the conversion price for the cake, it will be five ringgit. For this warrant, however, it's about 50 cents. The second thing that we need to uh, check is the maturity date. Now, we understand that warrants, the vouchers, all this normally has a certain period to it. Now, some can be three months, some can be five years, some can be 10 years. So how do we know uh, when it will mature? It's like the same voucher as well. If it's uh, uh, after the maturity date, so basically, it's just a waste paper, right? So what can we do with waste paper? Just recycle, nothing can do. So if you were to really uh, make use of warrants, you really need to take in notice of when exactly is the maturity date. You need to post it up, put it in front of your screen, put it at your toilet, put it in your kitchen, wherever they will actually see it most. Okay. When you invest in warrants, you also need to understand where exactly is the volatility range? So you need to know that, okay, this warrants actually moves as well. Okay, so you need to know uh, how high and how low will, will it be for the past 52 weeks? 
And lastly, and most importantly, you need to know who exactly is the issuer. So you can see over here, as a KGB warrant, the issuer is the Kellington Group Berhad itself. So it's a mother share. So it, this is a company issue warrant. So it's very tightly linked to the uh, to, to the mother share, and it's issued by that. That means that it's not issued by the financial institution as well. So these are the uh, direct issued warrants, direct vouchers that us sorry give give the loyal shareholders a chance to subscribe to their mother share. This is the uh, something similar to what bonus issue and all this is trying to give back to shareholders as well. And the fifth and the sixth indicators that we would normally take into account would be the share premium percentage and the gearing ratio. For in the next two slides, we will be sharing about how exactly we can evaluate about these two indicators. Okay. So as we mentioned just now, after you issue the warrant, you, there's normally a certain tradable period. Let's say five years. So there's a five years period for this warrant until the maturity date and the warrant become a waste paper. So in between this date, they are, they, the warrant will go up and it will go down as well. So, but how does it goes up and why does it goes down? It normally revolves around uh, the mother share. So if the mother share, the cake from five, so from 10 ringgit become 20 ringgit, the warrant also co goes up from five ringgit to 15 ringgit for the cake case, cases. But since it's an open market, there's always chances where people are trading like, you know, when the cake is 20 ringgit and the warrant is, um, what, 18 ringgit. Would that be possible? If there's a supply and demand, it matches the transaction. Yes, it's possible 18 ringgit. But that 18 ringgit, sorry, that 18 ringgit will be at a premium. Will be a premium. That means you actually pay more to get the warrant. While it, it when it's uh when you pay about 12 ringgit or less than 15 ringgit, when the cake is at 20 ringgit, then you actually buying the the warrant at a discount. Now it always revolves around the same volatility range of the mother share as well. So these are some of the things that we need to take uh, account in when we look at the percentage of share premium. There's a formula that you can look up in Google how exactly you calculate the share premium, but mo most importantly is how many percent of positivity or negative of that number. And as Warren goes closer to maturity date, Normally, there will be less trading activities, and it just most of the time goes moves towards a share discount region. Okay, <clears throat> as for the reason, maybe we can check with uh, our Mr. Peter later on. <clears throat> as for the gearing ratio, now gearing ratio is talking about leveraging. The larger the gearing ratio the better the return. How does it work? Now, if you look back at the cake and the voucher uh, example just now, when the cake is at 10 ringgit, the voucher is at 5 ringgit. 10 divided by 5, that's the gearing ratio of 2 times. Now, what if the issuer decides that he wants to give a voucher where you, all, where you need to give an exercise price of 9 ringgit? Okay, so nine ringgit, then you pay nine ringgit, you get another cake. That makes more sense, right? That makes more sense in, in reality, in market. When you go around the cake, you, you say like, okay, you are a loyal customer, I give you another 20% discount, 10% discount. So the same thing happens over here. The gearing ratio that you get is, you need to exercise at nine ringgit. So that makes the voucher at one ringgit. At the mother chef, the, the, the cake at 10 ringgit, the voucher at 1 ringgit, the gearing ratio is at 10 times. So when the cake becomes 20 ringgit, what happens to the voucher? It also goes from 1 ringgit plus another 10 ringgit into 11 ringgit. That gearing ratio of 10 
actually gives you a better return of 1,000%. So when we look at Warren's gearing ratio is actually a indicator for us as well of how profitable it would be when it rises. But at the same time, when the mother share drops, Warren also takes a big dive. Now, if I can give you a case study, a real life case studies uh, in what happened in 2019, 2018 and 2019. So we were looking into this company called Kellington Group Berhad. So this Kellington Group Berhad is a construction company servicing for uh, a lot of uh, gases, industrial gases, and the one-stop solution for building the facilities. Uh, if you're interested, you can check out the, uh, the videos in online campus. Now, if you will look at this, the share price trends are basically more or less the same, but the returns that we've gotten, even including dividend, the mother share can give you exactly 387%. Sorry, exactly would be 387.5%, right? My bad, 387.5%. But if you were to take into, a, take into the warrants after one year, you actually got a re absolute return of is approximately 1,133%. So that's a significant jump from uh, you from the normal <coughs> mother share and the warrants. Take into account that warrants also can drop. So when it drops at this point, it's actually quite paid as well. <coughs> so that's so uh, when we talk about the key indicators for evaluating warrants three things that we always, always, always keep in mind, share premium percentage, gearing ratios, and most importantly, the maturity date. Never, never forget about the maturity date. Next, we are going to talk about managing the risk of investing in a warrant. So like what we said, the gearing ratio tells you if it goes up, it also can come down very uh, sharply. So Warren, it's a double edged short, uh, sorry, double edge sword. <clears throat> so you need to balance the risk and reward. And that's how you turn the reward become real money. Some of the risks that we found throughout the years, okay, we understand that this voucher, this warrants, these are tradable products with maturity period. Always remember the three things uh, over here. It's maturity date, conversion ratio, the conversion prices. Uh, we also need to take into account the gearing ratios. The third thing we need to put into mind is that when this warrants, these vouchers, these warrants, when they convert, they convert into mother shares. So that would mean that as the warrants come uh, nearer to the maturity date or in certain times when, when it's in discount uh, regions, people, investors might be interested to change it, to convert it into mother shares. And that's where the pool of uh, total number of shareholdings, NOSH, becomes bigger. And that would take into effect that you, have, you will be diluting the profit. So always we need to take into account that how many warrants are actually gone out in the market and the calculation we normally cover in the class. Okay. And more importantly is on the fourth one, these warrants are following the mother share. So whatever changes fundamentally to the mother share, if it's going in a growing mode or if it's not, if it's not, then that's, we are, that's not a warrant that we are looking into. We always, always, always have to take into account what exactly happened to the mother share. And the fifth will be talking about the share premium trend, as well as warrants are sometimes or mostly a sure coating strategy for when uh, companies want to issue, right issue, they want to get money or, you know, these are some of the ways that can uh, reward the shareholders. At the same time, it also gives a sugar coating strategy to help investors to uh, subscribe to their right issue. So we need to take into account of all this, how exactly the profit dilution effect that can affect the next month, sorry, next quarter and or next year uh, profitability as well.
Okay, so this is more on the managing the risk of the warrant. So on the commonality of the mother share and warrant, we need to always remember the share price volatility range, the warrant premium trend. Are they in line? Are they consistent? Are they reliable? Are they sustainable? And that's the key things that we need to remember. And lastly, uh, this is the words of uh, our Ricky Sifu. The rules of investing in a warrant, that's only, wait, uh, should I say two or one? <laughs> the rule number one, only buy company issued warrants with growth. Without growth, no talk. No way. Okay. Rule number two, refer rule number one. If there's no growth, forget about it. <clears throat> so for the past um, 30 minutes, we have been sharing with you uh, what exactly is a warrant, the key indicators of uh, evaluating warrants, which is uh, we talk on the share premium percentage, the gearing ratios, as well as the majority date, the three key indicators when we track warrants. This is the most important indicators that we need to put into mind. The next thing, the last thing that we were talking on will be, will be, will be the risk management and the rules of investing in a warrant. That would sums the end of my presentation. Uh, if I can pass back the chair to Sikyang and Peter, if you have anything to add on. Sikyang, I got nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, approve, uh, okay, Sifu. Hey. <laughs> not, not my call today, it's the audience call. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So actually, we welcome uh, question. So feel free to uh, to ask your question uh, so that we can uh, uh, answer you together. Yeah, there's quite a few questions. I mm. think I think Jason will be able to pull them out. Yep. Uh, which one would you want to start with? No, no. Up to you. See which one that is. I, I think a question about Florence Chin, but I don't really know. Uh, exactly what, what she's referring to. She's asking uh, why warrants are still very active three months to expiry. But normal warrants, as they go near expiry date, they'll be less active. Uh, oh, three months to expiry. Even warrants, warrants are so same. So if, if you were to take into effect that call warrants are normally between uh, three months to 12 months. So if you were to say three months to expiry, that's only nine months in. If a lot of people are still holding them, then it should be still active. Yes. So three months is, I think, com compare relatively to the company warrants, this is a much more longer time compared to normally what we uh, see. Uh, normally, company warrants will have uh, at least uh, five years uh, uh, majority uh, time compared to the core warrant, which normally only uh, will expire within the 12 months from the issue time. I, I think if I may add on to that, I think the, the activeness of a warrant, right, is, is also dependent on how active is the mother share, right? So for example, right, if you may be on the last month before expiry, right, but if suddenly the mother share price keeps shooting up, uh, the, the warrant will also be very active. Right. So unless in the last three months of the term that the mother share is pretty quiet, you know, pretty dead or on a downtrend, then of course the warrant will not be active. So it also depending on how active is the mother share during those periods. So so don't don't think um, warrant expire when when warrant is going to expire, there is no value. Uh, I still remember this um, way. Just 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 an example. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember way back. I think three 2017. 2017 or 2018. Remember that time Notion Warren was about to expire only less one, mm. one month before expiry. Yeah. But suddenly Notion share price actually showed up and, and the Warren in the last one month actually made a lot, a lot of return for investors. So, so don't have that perception saying that because it's close to expiry, there will be no value. It really depends on how active is the mother share. That, that was a Warren B or Warren C. If I, I, know, I, I remember that time because I, I, know, I know people who bought into Warren at that time, they were laughing all the way to the bank. <laughs> that wasn't just, just you know. <laughs> Warren C, Warren C. 
w a r r e n C. Yeah, I assume right. Yeah, w a r r e n C. w a r r e n C. Same thing happens to Unisam w a r r e n A as well. Oh, is it? Good money. <laughs> A normal case uh, we normally see is uh, the trading will be very uh, quiet. And when it comes to the majority dates, take for example, I can uh, uh, quote for example, Asia X uh, Warren, which expired recently. So you can see before expiry, I, I mean a few weeks before expiry, expiry date, uh, the warrants, uh, the the volume has been, um, I think, zero all the time. Yeah, because uh, the mother share is on down 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 trend. So no interest on uh, uh, trading the warrant. Uh. So no point and no interest on trading the warrant. In, yeah. There's also a question I found who but asking, can you explain what is the meaning of in the money warrant, out of money warrant? Let me have a look. Yeah. It's similar to premium and discount, right? Yes, at least. Yeah. No, if you, yeah, I think I, I, someone asked actually what, what is the, what is actually mean by in the money warrant and out of the money warrant. So in the money warrant is what, speaking. Uh, can uh, we put uh, uh, there, there. we put put up the 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 previous slide, Jason? Previous slide. Yep. Which one? The discount and uh... oh, there you go. Yeah, in the money is that when we compare compare the mother share and uh, the the warrant, uh, since the issuance the the voucher actually the the warrant has a fixed conversion price but the mother's uh, share and the uh, and the warrants are fluctuate um uh, uh, accordingly or volatility according to volatility so at one point of time if you found that your your warrant top up and plus your your conversion price less than the less than the uh, mother share so this is called the uh, in the money in the money so likewise uh, if the opposite side will be out of money so which means you are paying some premium uh, and uh, to to convert it to the to the uh, mother share so it normally we refers to in the money and out of money in this case Yeah, uh, Sifu, Peter, any, any to talk up? No. I got no so idea. Uh, we always, of, of course, as an investor, we always look for in the money, la, in the money, but this is uh, quite a real, rare case. Uh, but sometimes during the market volatility, it will happen. But after a while, the, the volatility will, uh, the trend will be followed back. La. So, uh, if you follow the, the trend uh, exactly, you will see that actually the mother share and the uh, and the uh, warrant actually they behave uh, in the in the very similar uh, pattern. Just once upon time, I mean once a while during the market volatility, uh, you will find that uh, uh, this uh, scenario. There's two interesting questions from calling out. Um, he first asked is what is the difference with between a put and a call warrant? And the second is do warrant issued by IB are convertible. Okay, I think I this take this the first question. What are the difference with put and call warrant? Okay, this is another uh, another products introduced in our market. Okay. Although it carries the same warrants and uh, the names of it carries the same warrant, but this type of warrant actually uh, it has a different uh, uh, different feature and different uh, different point from the company warrant. First of all, uh, the expiry date is very much uh, uh, shorter. 
compared to company warrant. So as mentioned by Jason, it's uh, normally in Malaysian market range between three months to 12 months. And then this is this kind this type of warrant is issued by the third party, it's not issued by the company. So it's not it, it has nothing to do, no relation with the with the mother share with the company, this company. So when we refer to call warrant, uh, actually this is uh, uh, actually call warrant and put warrant is a tradable product. Uh. We investor use it to as a as a trading tools, uh, trading tools. So when you buy it, you never uh, buy it and uh, uh, keep it. Uh. This is for you to trade. So when do you need to trade a uh, call warrant? It is in the bullish market. So the the, the the nature of the call warrant is that you can make the money or you earn the money when the mother share is uh, moving up, the call warrant also moving up. So if you bought the call warrant, then in this case, you are, you are, uh, uh, you are making the money. But if the mother shares are moving down, Share, uh, shares of uh, mother uh, mother share moving down and you hold the call warrant and you were making a loss so likewise a uh, put warrant it behave uh, 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 differently so put warrant is that in is the most uh, favor in the bearish market so when mother's uh, share drop uh, call warrant you will make a money uh, you are making a money for uh, put warrant sorry so likewise when the mother share moving out uh, you hold the put warrant and you are uh, making the loss. Yep. So, uh, two warrant issued by IP are convertible. Uh, it yes, it is it's convertible, but it's not convert into the mother share. It convert into the cash uh, warrant. Uh, 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 sorry, structure warrant. Uh, we refer to warrant and call warrant to as a structure warrant. Okay. So put warrant and uh, call warrant, uh, it, it just behave differently. La. But uh, in general, we call it structure warrant. It's not issued by the company, company but issued by IB. It's, yes, it is uh, convertible. But bear in mind that uh, it only can convert when during the ex expiry date. It's not compared to the company warrant. We can convert it anytime anytime within the period so you no need to wait until the end of the uh, uh expired expiry date uh to convert but you that is called company or you can convert it anytime no need to wait until the expiry date but for uh structure warrant you have to wait until so you can't convert it anytime this is uh, the main difference of uh, structure warrant and the company warrant so I hope uh, answer your question. Okay, there is there's a question is by W. Ken Chong. How do you determine a growth company? What if you have negative premium and negative gearing ratio? Listen, you would like to take it? I'll take the second question. Uh, what if we have negative premium? But well, if it's a negative premium, then it's in the discount. But if it's in the discount, we need to ask. First, is it nearing the maturity date? Secondly, uh, will the mother share have growth or not first? If it's have growth, then discount or premium doesn't matter. For me, it's, it's still going up. Now, for the negative gearing ratio, um, if I could put it this way, it's impossible to have a negative gearing ratio as the gearing gearing ratio uh, formula is mother share divided by warrants. So if the mother share and the warrants cannot be negative, then the numbers, the, the gearing ratio, it's impossible to go into negative. As for how to determine a growth company, then we will need to drive uh, back to if you could see the company at two points. Uh, one, capital at risk. Secondly, timing risk. So capital at risk, we will talk about 
how, how exactly is the business model and the prospect of the industry. As for the timing risk, we'll be looking more towards the prospect, the, the thematic of the company. If it's going to be uh, expansion, etc. All these are uh, indicators that this company is in a growing mode and we need to apply a certain percent, sorry, a certain business sense when we look into companies' growth as well. Uh, obviously, it's a big, a big title, a big topic as well. Okay, this this question by Theo Gap Singh. Normally, company warrants will command some premium. How do we justify the premium? Wow, good question, man. I love this. Now, if I were to follow uh, Peter Sifu's um, mindset, uh, hey, you answered this question before. Is it? <laughs> I don't remember. And I like the answer. Because I remember something that you mentioned. Uh, the cake is 12 ringgit is cheap or is the cake at 15 ringgit expensive? It really depends on a very personal note, right? If you think it's cheap, it's cheap. If you think it's expensive, it's expensive. The How you value a cake and how you value a company is definitely a very personalized number. Yes. I said this before me. <laughs> yes. Many times. I don't remember. <laughs> Your, your videos, okay? <laughs> okay, from our past experience, we noticed that uh, certain company actually, uh, the warrants actually from the beginning of the time, beginning of the issuance time, uh, it already behave in a certain range of premium. So say for example, certain companies uh, warrant from the starting time, you always uh, keep the 50% uh, premium all the time. So this is the what we see. This is the the trend or the trend of this uh, warrant. But bear in mind that not every warrants uh, behave fifty percent. It might be just ten percent all the while. Okay, so you can't really that uh, saying that fifty percent is uh, very very uh, expensive or ten percent is very worth or cheap. You have to study uh, the the trend between the mother share and also the warrant and also. Uh, roll back to the our principle. Uh, we actually re, we we actually not buying the warranty. We are actually buying the mother shares uh, trend. But just that we are leverage the warrant. We we are using a leverage tools uh, to buy warrant. Uh, we always say that in Mandarin, uh, you using a small knife to chop a big tree. This is a leverage uh, <laughs> idea. So if you don't have a very big capital or don't have a much uh, uh, capital, maybe Warren is uh, a good consideration provided you uh, manage all the risks and you understand what is the criteria and requirement for to, 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 to trade the Warren or to hold a Warren. Yeah. Maybe I'll add on to this. Uh, I'll... I'll, I'll give a long a, a, a long answer to, to this question which i think is it, it can explain because i saw quite a lot of different questions also uh somehow linked together with this right yep. the, the first question you have to ask yourself is why would you want to buy a warren right the only reason you want to buy a warren is you want the leverage okay in, in this case we say leverage doesn't mean you're borrowing money to buy let's just give a very simple example right assuming this company you, you have a warrant which can be converted by 10 cent means with a warrant you pay 10 cent you can convert to mother share okay now very simple assuming the mother now is 20 cent right so on a theoretical basis the mother is 20 cent you minus a 10 cent conversion which the voucher else you can mention so the warrant should be worth 10 cent zero premium zero discount on the parity is 10 cent okay now assuming the mother went up by two cent so become 22 cent correct so you have a 10 percent return from the mother but because on the parity basis assuming no premium the warrant should also go up by two cents so became 10 cents become 12 cents so a 10 percent return on the mother becomes a 20 percent return on the warrant so that is actually the real reason or, or the only reason why you want to buy into a warrant you want that leverage okay now i, I think there's a question also about um the sensitivity so this is what sensitivity is about okay now Assuming this company got two warrants, one warrant A, you can convert at 10 cents. But you also issue a warrant B, you can convert at five, uh, uh, at say 15 cents. You can convert at 15 cents. Okay. Okay. Now that means on a par basis, warrant A should worth 10 cents. Assuming the mother shares 20 cents. 
and Warren B should work five cent, correct? Because you mm. buy five cent, correct? You can convert using 15 cent to become 20 cent. Mm. So for the same example, assuming Warren A move up by two, eh, sorry, the mother share move up by two cent, 22 cent, correct? Mm. Warren A will move from 10 cent to 12 cent, become 20% return. Warren B will move from 5 cent to 7 cent, which is a 40% return. That is why that is also answer about the sensitivity. So the, the, the higher the conversion price means the lower the Warren price on a parity basis, and let's not talk about premium or discount, right? The higher leverage you have. Okay, so that's one part of it. So for those who really want sensitivity, they will go for the lower value of the market price of the warrant so that every movement in the mother share will have a bigger impact. That is one, one theory on one hand. But on the other hand, there's also another theory. Let's talk about premium. Okay, then you talk about your investor. Assuming you have to choose between warrant A, that you have to pay 10 cents to convert, and warrant B, which is you need to pay 15 cents to convert. Okay, now, as an investor perspective, between Warren A and Warren B, which one you think you'll pay a premium for it? Okay. Because ultimately, right, you imagine you need to think you're on your position. Between forking out another 10 cent to get the mother share and forking out a 15 cent to get the mother share, which one you prefer? So generally, I'm not saying everybody, but generally people prefer only to fork out 10 cent, right? The, the lower the money you do fork out, the better. So that's why technically between Warren A and Warren B, Warren A will actually have a higher value or more in demand, and therefore you trade at a premium compared with Warren B, theoretically, simply because at the end of the day, you only need to pay 10 cents to convert into the mother, whereas Warren B, you have fork out 15 cents to convert to the mother. So see, just like Warren, there is no fixed rule, it can move either way. So it's not necessary because Warren B, the, the cash, uh, the, the, the market price is lower, you will trade at a premium, not necessary. So it can move various ways. So there's really no best way to say, okay, I should, there's no fixed formula that I should buy either a very low market price warrant or should I buy a very uh, low conversion price warrant. It, it, there is really no fixed formula for that. It, it really is case by case basis. Yeah. So I, I, I hope. So what premium is justifiable that you think is just for the warrant? The end answer is warrant is always led by the mother. There is no case where the mother share price is led by the warrant. The warrant can search 100% premium, doesn't mean the mother will move. But when the mother moves, the warrant will definitely move. right? So how much premium is justified? It really depends on your forecast of how much the mother is worth. If after you calculate that the mother's worth is still much more than where it is now, and it's still justifiable by buying it into a premium, then you can actually buy it even at a premium. So long and short, the valuation of the pre of the warrant is really dependent on how much you think the mother is worth. Yeah. Sorry, I talked too long again. Okay, thank you, Koi. Okay. So very thank you, Peter, for for uh your valuable valuable uh input. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Because uh, we always uh, came across a lot of uh, questions what why within the same company issue the different different uh, warrants but it has a different uh, pricing conversion rate and uh, the volume as well so uh, Peter has a uh, uh, has a very good uh, explanation in depth uh, for us I, I hope I answered <laughs> this is a very long story uh okay what else question any question that you saw there jason uh there's a few from youtube our our loyal youtube subscribers uh Xiong Kok tan was asking should we buy core warrants or company warrants in a growth company uh, maybe i want to clarify this question for you guys i think when Xiong Kok tan when i say core warrant i think it, it, okay I think, again this is something that although technically under finance or under terminology right a core warrant is a buy warrant, means to say the right to buy, the voucher right to buy. Whereas a, 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 a put warrant is a sell warrant, means a right to sell. But what happened is, if you notice in Busa, Malaysia, core warrants are, a, a, when, when, when the investment bank, you see there's a difference. Usually if a company issued a warrant themselves, they'll call it, like for instance, um, Asia Poly Warrant A, Asia Poly Warrant B. But if it's issued by the investment bank, they'll actually put the terminology first, they'll put core warrant the company. 
So I think in this case, what Sean Kok Tan is asking is, should you buy call warrant or what I think he's trying to say is, should you buy warrant issued by investment bank or should you buy warrant issued by the company for a growth company? That is uh, totally two different uh, questions. We have to make clear it first because it's, this is act, basically a two different uh, products. Right. <laughs> so, which so, uh, one would you buy? Personally, personally, actually, um, as uh, maybe some of the member maybe know my uh, 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 investment. Uh, 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 selection. I seldom uh, invest in company. Uh, I seldom invest in warrant, even though company warrant. So from my past, I think uh, most uh, 10 years of uh, investment uh, history, I never bought any call warrant or put warrant before. Uh, so just uh, sometimes only consider company warrant. And also the most of the warrant I have with me is uh, is is a complimentary gift actually given by the, uh, issued by the company. So it's really really uh, uh, depends on the personal uh, uh, be personal selection. So why I I I, I consider mother share because I like the dividend. So bear in mind that uh, uh, I like the dividend in the sense that. I, I have some kind of uh, uh, happiness uh, when I receive the dividend I saw right, uh, every day or maybe every week I, I receive a notice that right, I receive uh, uh, how much or as a dividend in my company. So this is a very uh, also another different point between the mother share. You, if you buy mother share and also the warren. So for warren holder, you do not entitle or enjoy any dividend issued by company. So you, you know, right? Sui Kiang is one investor who got very good operating cash flow. So for those who actually need any loans, he's actually the best guy to look for, right? <laughs> right? Most of us, are, most investors are actually paper gain only, but Sui Kiang is a cash inflow uh, investor. Okay, can I can lend you 10, uh, 10 cents, no problem. <laughs> All right. Boxo Tan from Facebook is asking, Peter Sifu, Please explain the differences between Warren versus preference shares with a smiley face. Uh, that, that is a winking face. Uh. Winking is winking, okay. uh. winking from here. Okay, I, uh, Jason and I please uh, sit back and relax. Hey, what is <laughs> the, the, the difference is preference preference share. It, it really depends. Preference share, as I mentioned, is it is more of of. Um, it, it really depends on the structure, right? A warrant is basically an instrument. A, a right to buy or a right to sell. I mean, if it's a if it's a call warrant, means it's a right to buy, it's a right to sell. I said it is mainly for you to actually play for a leverage. Whereas for preference shares, right, it is actually mean you can get a return for it, a fixed return. But there are some preference shares where you can also convert to mother share, right? So that, that is really depend on the structure of preference shares on that basis. So long long and short, preference shares. Depend on the structure, there are some preference shares who still give you a payment of an interest payment on a per annum basis. So you still enjoy that payment and they still allow you to convert into mother. Right? But whereas for warrant, it is purely a conversion game. As, assuming the warrant is being issued by the company and not by investment bank. Just as Swekang mentioned, it, the, the, the problem with obviously the problem, uh, the, the, you, when you buy a warrant issued by investment bank, you must be very aware it's not convertible to the company mm. shares. All right, Suje from uh, Facebook was asking, any additional costs when I exercise my warrants apart from the exercise price? Uh, yes, you do. You It incurs uh, some stamp duties, if not mistaken, and also some uh, extra administrative uh, charges. Uh, but it's relatively very small amount of uh, these extra charges. So the big chunk of uh, uh, extra cost is refer to your 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 conversion or uh, strike price. Uh. Um, if I can add on slightly on that, so during the five years period, say five years is the tradable period, uh, five years is the convertible period. 
when any of time, any time between these five years, when you decide to convert your warrants, you want to convert into mother shares, there's a few things you need to do. Uh, one, you need to download the form from the Busa announcement. You need to uh, write the form up. Then you need to prepare some monies from, uh, first thing is the, 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 the stamp duty, 10 ringgit, if I'm, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Second thing is you need to prepare a bank graph. And then you need to go to banks and explain to them why do you need this money and all this. Uh, this is the two portion that you need to do. And the third thing is after you do, you finish up all this form, seal it into a letter. You need to send it uh, personally, or you can send it via like postlaju and all these services to the registrar. So this is the three costs that basically you need to do lah. These additional costs probably not more than 10, 20 if your warrants are not a big amount, I guess. That's yeah. from us experience. Really it's small amount, uh, relatively. Uh, mm. uh, yeah. Yep. And... Uh, Jepsen got, got yep. a follow-up question on if we bought into a company and come back increase significantly. Uh, yeah. We, can we use warrant to hedge? That means we sell the mother, lock in the profit, but still enjoy the company growth. Um, if, if I try to answer this right, it, it really depends on whether the warrant is at a premium parity or discount, right? If a if a warrant is already at a premium, right, you, you may or may not be hedging because depending on the extent of the premium. If I give a very extreme example, if the warrant is at a hundred percent premium, right, then then why would you want to sell the mother and buy a hundred percent premium warrant? So by buying a hundred percent premium warrant doesn't mean you're actually hedging on, on that basis. So the answer to this it depends on multiple factors, but one important factor is at what rate is the warrant traded at. But if the, assuming on a different level, if the warrant is trading at a discount, then yes, I would call that is a very good way to hedge in, in, in that sense, but not when the warrant is at a premium. Uh, Darren Ng is asking, upon maturity date, do company warrants automatically be convert in, converted into mother shares? So the answer is no. So take note that Jason has reminded again, again, very uh, take note, uh, particularly on the majority date. So if you didn't take any action on uh, to, to convert it into the mother share, your your company warrants will become a uh, waste paper. Hmm. Yeah. So bear in mind, we will have to uh, take some action if you intended to convert it. Hmm. Uh, of course, sometimes uh, we just let it uh, expire uh, because if you convert it, also no point to convert it. Uh, you will find some case that uh, some investor will not you choose not to convert or do nothing with the warrants because it's already already not worth to in convert it into the mother share because you pay you rather than buying the mother share from the market uh, rather than convert it into the um, uh, convert it from the warrant. So Philip Chen from Facebook is asking, how does the gearing of a warrant affect that when the company gives bonus issue? Speaking? I think I let Peter Sifu to answer this question. Uh, get whenever, some help. whenever there's a bonus issue, um, that the, the adjustment price, the, the the exercise price of the warrant will be adjusted accordingly to the ratio of the bonus issue. Uh, even if there's a split, the, the, the exercise price, uh, the exercise price will be adjusted accordingly to that. Yeah. So, uh, which means in this case, uh, mother share bonus uh, issue at the same time, the warrant also uh, uh, have, having the same uh, ratio of uh, issuance. But but uh, no, no but but your, see uh, when mother have bonus issue right the warrant you don't get bonus issue I don't you don't get bonus warrant right? exhaust, yeah it's <laughs> it's exhaust. Exhaust. your exercise price will be adjusted yes this uh Melissa sorry Melissa Loa over here asking can you explain the impact of a sold out 
call or put warrant so out i never heard of this term before so i can't help you i'm not sure if you guys heard of this term so out uh, no i have not heard of this so out call uh, you no, mean I the call 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 so back or, call back of a uh, warrant so out i honestly i haven't heard this term before so i, I can't help no no idea sorry yeah okay so so may was asking hi can you please explain more on the sugar coating strategy can give some actual example um if if i may take this question of course of course for sure all right so there are times where company they, they have a certain growth expansion and all this they need money um the, one of the ways is you can get it from banks you can get it from a uh, uh, low charts. Sorry, I can't say low chart, right? <coughs> you can either get it from banks or other financial institutions, or you can get it from shareholders through doing a uh, right issue or doing uh, uh, different kinds of uh, like loan stock or preference shares, at least to raise money. So one of the ways to uh, attract people would attract investor would be to maybe put a uh, warrants for free uh, when you ask for the right issue so these are some of the examples of sugar coating strategy <clears throat> actual example a lot a lot, a lot of companies you know this usually companies when that what, what jason mentioned right usually when company they want to call for rights issue see rights issue frankly is asking you for money la, not inject more money with me right so most of the people say, hey, you know, why, why should I inject more money into you, right? I might as well use money buy other shares or buy anything. So usually as, as, the, as, as, the, as a sweetener for it, right? You actually say, okay, if you subscribe to my rights issue, I'm going to give you warrant. So it's an additional sweetener for you to subscribe for the rights issue. Yeah. So usually, usually yeah, warrant is, 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 um, is added as a sweetener. Uh, but of course, it doesn't mean that warrant can only be issued when there's a right issue. You can also issue warrant even without the rights issue. Yeah. Right. Do you have uh, any more questions that you want to go with? It's oh, that, that, that I okay. Uh, maybe so. Talk about this. This sweetener. Basically. Okay. There's another set of warrant which, of course, we, we don't because we always talk about warrant. As I mentioned, we just investor take warrant about leverage, 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 right? But mm. for second warrant on the company perspective, you may you may wonder how does warrant help a company? You see, back to that conversion price. For you to convert uh, back to the paid example given by Sui Kiang, right? You need to pay the five ringgit to convert to the mother share. So think about it. This five ringgit actually goes to who? The five ringgit actually don't go to the brokers. The five ringgit actually goes to the company. So another set of warrant is actually beneficial for company to a certain extent. Whenever shareholders you exercise the warrant, the company actually builds up the cash because the five ringgit that you pay actually goes to the company. Right. Um, so that is another perspective of okay. Some, why some companies they issue warrant also is that for future payments. Say for instance, also very rare company uses this strategy, but there are some companies who actually have a few years plan. Say for instance, right, I plan to expand my capacity over the next one, two, three years, right? But I need money for the expansion, right? So what do I do? Right? Do I go to bank? Assuming that you don't have that much cash in your bank, right? So what they can do is one strategy is I can issue three types of warrant: one warrant merged, one year one, year two, and year three. Right. Because you see, warrant, if you don't exercise, you will go into zero value. Correct? So technically, there will be people who actually want to buy warrant. Year one, this batch of warrant will be exercised. So then once it's exercised, you actually raise the cash to the company. Then year two, another batch will be exercised and you raise money into it. And year three. So that's another perspective of warrant where actually it is also a method for some companies to actually raise money for capital expansion. Yeah. Mm. Okay, uh, Hong Ji Wong uh, from Facebook is asking this very interesting question. I have never thought of this the way. Uh, what is the limit of numbers of warrants as compared with mother's share? Can we have 10 million warrants but 5 million auditory shares? <laughs> it's, it's, it, is, it is possible. Um, it is possible. Um, maybe I, I, I add on to that right? uh, another reason also another another reason why warrants are being issued right is actually a defensive strategy which is quite related to this question right say for instance um you notice most, most of the time the bulk of the warrant will be held by the owner or the major shareholder 
So it's actually a defensive strategy. So in a sense, to avoid any hostile takeover. Because if one of the things that if, if that is a hawk or an eagle, right, that's eyeing for a company to be a hostile takeover, right? You will notice the first thing they look for is how many warrants are there. Because on surface, you may look at the owner may control 30% of the shares. So on surface, you may think that well, it is an easy acquisition target because I can actually buy up more than 30%, I can gain control company. But how a lot of companies, they control the companies by, they own a lot of warrants. So it's like a defensive move. They say, okay, you may try to take over me, but don't forget, I, can, I have warrants to convert. And once I convert my warrant, my share can actually be more than what you are. So oh. another, another perspective of warrant is also a defensive strategy by the owner um, to prevent any chances of hostile takeover. Yeah, so that's another. So which is quite in relation to, to this. There are possibilities, yes, there are chances where the, the warrant can be converted into a substantially large amount of shares. Yeah. Interesting. First time. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Peter, you have a, your biggest fans is say um, if today is the majority but i only found out today is there a way to exercise warrant to mother share when the majority has passed by a day or two i'll, I'll answer these questions in, a, in another way um in another way okay yes okay okay when we say about leverage right leverage we all think in a very simple way okay say if you buy a, a warrant at a discount right your leverage or your arbitrage, that's not arbitrage. Your arbitrage will be when you buy at a discount, you buy the warrant, you convert into mother, right? And then you sell it as a mother. So that's what called arbitrage. Mean to say, uh, back to the 20 cent mother example, right? Say, for instance, the, the conversion of warrant A is 10 cent, as the same as my gave earlier. But now you realize, suddenly, for some reason, the market price of warrant A is 5 cent. So your arbitrage is you buy warrant A at five cent, you convert, you pay the ten cent to convert. Your total cost is fifteen cent, and then after convert, you got the mother share. You sell at twenty cent. So that's called an arbitrage. But arbitrage mm. is very theoretical. It's hard to work in real life because by the time like what Jason mentioned, right, you do all the paper procedures, you take at least two weeks. two weeks before you get the mother share. So you have to really pray hard. In the next two weeks, the mother share is still twenty cent because if the mother share is no longer twenty cent, the arbitrage doesn't work. Okay, mm. but. Another way to think about it, what about another type of arbitrage which a lot of people don't think about it? Okay, now the question is, if the warrant is trading at a premium, does that mean there is no arbitrage opportunity? There is arbitrage opportunity. Very yep. simple one. If the, pre if the warrant is traded at a premium, then why not you sell the whole warrant and buy the mother share directly? You, you, you see where I'm coming from? Right, you're, you're still making money out of it because if the if if you buy a warrant at a discount and the warrant went to a premium, you may think that hey, at a premium, why would I buy a premium that I don't get to convert? It's crazy to convert a, a warrant at a premium to mother share. Your cost Agreed. will be higher. But the arbitrage is you sell the warrant at a premium and then you get mother share. So why I use this to example to answer VNX is because if you've only found today is a maturity date, you don't need to convert, right? You can actually sell the warrant and buy the mother. You may not go through the whole process. So arbitrage doesn't mean to get the arbitrage benefit from Warren. It doesn't mean you necessarily have to use the conversion method to buy Warren, convert the mother and sell. You can also make an arbitrage opportunity by selling a Warren at a premium and buy the mother share. So to answer the next, even if you found that maturity is today, then you might as well just sell the Warren and buy the mother. But assuming, assuming the warrant is a premium, if the warrant is at the discount, you just sell the warrant, don't do anything. If you do it. So actually, uh, it looks like we, we have uh, lots of uh, things to consider before we we, yeah. we buy or, or, or consider the the warrant. So bear in mind, it's not as simple as as a direct looking at the mother shares. You, 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 warrants, you really have to look at it very carefully, especially the remember the slide where Jason showed about the terms. Huh? It's actually a very important thing you have to understand because sometimes people may not understand. Um, like I take a very good example, right? Um, okay, let's take a, a recent company we featured in our club meeting, for instance, uh, with the Asia Poly, for instance. You notice there's three types as PA, WA, and WB. Um, what has been quite misunderstood is actually the PA. So if you look at the PA, I think a lot of people don't realize, I'm not sure at this point because 
you have to really go into the terms of a conversion if you really want to invest in all this, whether it's a PA or a warrant, right? So for in the case of PA, there's actually two conversion terms. There's actually two, two criteria for conversion for PA. Criteria one is you take two PA to convert into one mother share. So there's no cash payment, right? That you take two PA, you convert. So that's yep. option one. But I think a lot of people don't realize there's also another option, which is option two. Option two is you need to only pay five cents. Means your voucher is five cents. So you take, just take one PA, you pay five cents, you can convert to mother share. So that's why there's always some disparity or, or some um, arbitrage situation happen because some investors don't really look at the terms correctly or, or they, they didn't read, they really read half the story, they don't read the other part of it. Yeah. So if you want to invest in Warren or, or structured or, or, or PA, you really must understand the conversion criteria. As long as we can mention, uh, uh, there's a lot of homework to be done even if you want to invest in Warren. It's not just silent buy, discount, just buy. You, know, it, this, you must look at all these terms. That's why I, I, I am a lazy man. I stay away of this <laughs> homework and direct focus on the mother share. Sometimes uh, most of the case. No, that, that's what, the next answer is a question, but my point is, if you already miss up your, your, your conversion period, actually what I'm trying to tell you is, might as well you just sell it, right? I mean, that, that's what I'm trying to say, right? I, I understand your question, right? If it's miss the conversion, then it becomes waste paper already, man. Okay, so that's why if you have chance to sell in the market, right? Might as well you just sell it, right? Rather than you, you go through the whole process. Actually, that is what I'm trying to, to tell you. Okay, uh, Harry has a question here. If Warren conversion price is one ringgit, mother share split uh, two to one, what will be the new conversion ratio for its Warren to mother share? No, the, the conversion ratio will not change, but the exercise price will change. That's what I'm trying to say. The exercise price will be adjusted accordingly, not, not the conversion ratio. The conversion ratio will be there, but the exercise price of it will change. Split two, wait, wait, split two. Okay, what, what, I think what you mean is split one to two. The mother share split one to two. That means your mother share from one ringgit become half price, correct? So technically, that means your conversion price or your exercise price will also be half. Yep. Okay. okay. So it's 9 13 pm right now. Uh, Shikang, do you want to? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, allow me to share uh, another a few information with you. Uh, so take note that uh, for those uh, follow for follow us uh, for a while, uh, as you you might aware, uh, now everyone can be a stock market genius. So what you need to do is just subscribe uh, subscribe our genius package. And uh, do leave us uh, your your interest uh, in our comment session. Our, our accredited trackers uh, staff will getting get in touch with you. Yep. So one of the one of the benefit as a genius member is that uh, you will enjoy uh, enjoy and back by the world class research and exclusive access to the leaders of Malaysia top company. So what we are trying uh, very hard to do is engage and uh, bridging between the investor and the listed company. So uh, Genius uh, members, you can understand your own company or some potential company uh, in more uh, detailed manner. So this is a few example that uh, featuring a, a few different companies. So one of it is uh, Mr. Lim Jong Guan from uh, Top Glove already came to our share with our uh, G, uh, club members in uh, April. If not mistaken, April uh, back in three months uh, time. Yeah, of course, our head of research, our Peter Sifu also will share with us his uh, research on the different, different industry. Okay, so from our just a uh, session with uh, Peter, I think uh, for the past one uh, one hour, we already learned a lot of uh, new things, uh, including me myself. So Peter will share con very consistently. I think every month, once a month, uh, with us on his uh, and uh, our team's uh, research. 
And uh, good news is that uh, for those uh, who haven't uh, signed up, the, uh, you, have, you still have a chance to have a try. So uh, you are given free access uh, to ETH platform for two weeks. Just register um, via the WhatsApp number plus 0603-8408-2070. And last but not least, uh, our Benny Sifu will be uh, speaking in our in Sharia Investing Education 2020 brought to you by Bursa Malaysia on tomorrow, 8 o'clock. I uh, repeat again, tomorrow, 8 o'clock, the title is Investing in the Properties the Easy Way. So stay tuned with, uh, our, uh, with our Facebook uh, live at 8 o'clock tomorrow, uh, as well as a YouTube channel as well. Uh, yes, we do have another round of uh, Bursa webinar uh, live brought by uh, equity tracker and busan malaysia uh, will be in charge by me myself and ricky sifu on this coming friday evening at eight o'clock so we'll be live in our equity tracker uh, mandarin facebook page as well as a uh, youtube uh, channel so the title of this uh, this webinar is how to spot timing risk and opportunity in bull bear market so so I hope to meet you all again in uh, on this Friday evening. Yep, this is the uh, last information we'd like to share. Uh, thank you for your precious time, uh, Sifu, uh, Peter, and also yeah, Jason you. as well. So I hope to see you all again uh, uh, tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night.